welcome everyone to this morning's Periscope. Uh, we have had a couple of previous broadcasts about insects and how we can use them in our garden situations. And uh, we wanted to continue that theme today because after um, <clears throat> one of our broadcasts, we had a lot of questions uh, about releasing uh, ladybugs in the garden and what can you do to ensure a successful release because most of the time when people release ladybugs in their gardens they disperse they go other places and they don't stay so we want to talk about maybe five tips that we can do at home when we purchase ladybugs or, or any other insect for that matter to release in our landscape to have success so kind of backgrounding a little bit if you've tuned in with us before, you know that here at San Antonio Water System, we do some integrated pest management at one of our water treatment plants. We release wasps to, um, yeah, come closer, or I'll come up to the side and we'll meet in the middle. Um, but we release tiny wasps uh, to control flies at one of our water treatment plants. It's a biological control measure. So here, uh, we have actually got some ladybugs. This is a native species to the United States called the convergent ladybug. They get their name because they have two little white lines on the top of their head that actually point towards each other or converge. So it's an easy way to identify them if you see them. They're not a very large ladybug, but they are red and uh, they have a variable number of spots. But those two white lines are always there uh, for this particular species. Uh, for those who are te technically inclined, the species is Hippodamia convergence, but the convergent ladybug is, um, is just fine uh, with, with that. So um, in, in this sort of a system, uh, integrated pest management uses a biological component to control pests. And uh, the biological component can be used as one of the options, but it is not a take-all option. Uh, they, Can I interrupt you yes. with a question? A uh, viewer wants to know what the yellow stuff is in the bag. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, in this bag, we have some wood shavings and we have a cotton ball. The cotton ball is moistened with water to provide hydration for the ladybugs. These ladybugs are shipped in refrigerated storage to keep them calm, to keep them alive longer, uh, because they usually are collected from hibernation areas in the United States. So keeping them in the refrigerator until it's time to release them helps them live longer, helps keep them calm and quiet, and they don't waste their energy and these uh, running around. Are a native species? This is a native species to the United States. They hibernate uh, in the mountains in western U.S. and west Texas. They hibernate in the mountains during the winter time, and uh, they are not a one of these species that hibernates in houses like we have. The Asian ladybug hibernates in houses. So. This particular species, very, very common uh, across the U.S., uh, one of the most common species that we have, the convergent ladybug. So we have the wood shavings. It's sort of just a filler to keep the package open so the package doesn't uh, push on them. Yeah, and, and then we have the cotton ball that we keep moistened with water uh, for hydration. So uh, when we think about uh, purchasing insects to release against a pest in, in our garden, first of all, they can be purchased online. They can be purchased at local nurseries, garden centers. There are several here in San Antonio that offer ladybugs uh, for purchase to release at home. And so it, the most important thing is if you are thinking about purchasing something live to release in your, in your landscape, Number one, you have to take care of them until it's time to release them. So in the case of ladybugs, you want to keep them refrigerated, not in the freezer, no. refrigerated uh, <laughs> until it's time to release them. You want to spritz them with a light mist of water if they don't have a cotton ball or if they do, just keep that cotton ball moistened so that they have a, a moisture source, something to drink until it's time for them to be released. Um, you can also use a mist of honey water. Uh, where it's you know, one part honey to maybe five parts water gives them a little bit of carbs a little bit of energy uh, that they can take in uh, before it's time to release them so that's the first thing is take care of them until it's time for them to be released number two you if you were to take these ladybugs and and release them during the day uh, they are going to disperse and they're not going to stay when they wake up from hibernation, their first impulse is to go away. And so they will go away from your yard. So uh, the best time to release uh, ladybugs and other living insects in your garden is in the evening. 
uh, mostly towards nightfall. You'll want to maybe release, uh, put them under a box, open the container, put them under a box or in a paper sack uh, in the area where you want to release them. Now, Danny, can we walk over to this one plant? Um, and we're just gonna sort of show the type of situation where you might do. Um, <clears throat> here at the, at the Saul's headquarters, we have a lot of native landscaping, but in this particular case, I'm just gonna use this uh, autumn sage here just as an example. But you would want to, if this was a plant that was infested with aphids or some other sort of insect that you would want to want the ladybugs to eat, you would want to approach this plant at night, get a box, something small, um, and be able to release, you know, cut open the bag under the box and keep it at the base of the plant where you want it to make the release. That way, all night long, these ladybugs are going to be staying close to that box. They're going to be staying close to the bag. And while the temperatures are cool uh, and sort of getting their energy a little bit, and then when the sun comes up, they're going to disperse onto the plants that are close by instead of just flying away. And so your chances of improving that particular uh, release and having them stay close go up dramatically by releasing them at night. So the box shouldn't, it shouldn't be like sealed. They should still be able to get out underneath. Yeah, you just want to put, a, put the box over them as a way just to kind of hold them close. They're going to stay close anyway because it's nighttime. Uh, most insects are not too active at night, especially ladybugs. Uh, they, they tend to slow down, they tend to be a little more, not dormant, but they're just not all that active at night. Some insects are more active at night because that's just how they are. Uh, in this particular case, ladybugs are, are typically more active during the day as a predator feeding on other insects. So that's the, that's the second thing is the time of day. Uh, you want to do it late evening, nightfall, uh, when, when the sun is going down. So the insects will be less likely to disperse away. They will stay close. The third thing is location, location, location. You want to release them near where you have a pest uh, insect population. Right now in fall gardens, cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, zucchinis are infested with aphids pretty badly, pumpkins. And so you'll want to release, put this, put your bag, put your container, cup, depending on what it comes in, close to those infested plants so that when they wake up, when they get ready to disperse the following morning, they're going to go straight onto the plants. They're going to start eating those aphids, getting energy. Uh, they will start mating. They'll start breeding on the plants. They'll start laying eggs and you'll start to see the larvae within a few days. Uh, ladybug larvae look like little alligators and they're usually black with a red stripe or an orange stripe and you'll see them crawling around on those plants. They're very, very active and they will seek out, they can eat a couple hundred aphids a day uh, when they are at the height. And what, the ladybug eggs, because they do lay eggs, right? Yes. Are they the little yellow dots under the leaf? Great question. Ladybug eggs look like clusters of yellow, tiny yellow footballs and they're laid standing up just in little rows, but they're all in a cluster and they do look like the little yellow footballs. And then yes. we were asked, how long can we expect them to stay in the person's yard? With all right, uh, well remember, this is a living organism, so they're going to have a lifespan. And typically ladybug adults live for a few weeks and they, they lay their eggs, the next generation goes along. And so from egg to adult, we're talking maybe a month or two. Uh, maximum lifespan. So you're going to have some of these adults are going to die. They're going to leave offspring behind and hopefully you will develop a little bit of a circulating reproducing population. But remember when the population of the food runs out, they're going to go somewhere else to look for more food. So if they're doing their job. Yes, if they're doing their job, eventually their numbers are going to decrease in your garden anyway. That's just the way nature works. Nature's population, cyclical population, when the pests get high, the predators get high. When the pests drop down, so do the predators. And it's like a roller coaster. It just goes up and down. So remember that. If you start to see less of them, it's probably because they've done their job and not because of something that you did or didn't do. So um, keep that in mind. So uh, other things you can do to uh, make sure you have a, sex a successful release, make sure you have food for them to eat in the garden. So we talked about um, <clears throat> having the species. We talked about uh, releasing them at nightfall in the evening. We talked about where to release them you know, near, near good plants, but make sure they have something to eat. If you just release them in your landscape and they don't have anything to eat, 
then heck yeah, they're going somewhere else. And uh, you have wasted your 14 or $15 for you know, a thousand ladybugs like this is. Um, so just keep that in mind. You're dealing with a living organism. So you can't train these. They're not going to know your name and be your friends. Uh, these are wild native organisms. So they're gonna do what, what nature and their instincts tell them to do. So you have to make sure that your conditions are right for them to stay. All right, we do. I'm trying to walk around the yes. obstacles here. Did we cover everything that we needed to discuss before I close this out? Yeah, I think, I think we've done, we've covered just about everything we wanna cover. You know, just to go over it one more time, make sure that you do get a species uh, of insect against which the pest population you want. So usually if it's aphids, then ladybugs, lacewings are going to be the, the target, uh, the, the predator of choice. Uh, you'll want to be able to release them in late evening, nightfall time frame so that they will stay, they will be docile as they're, as they're waking up. Make sure you keep them in the refrigerator until it's time to release them. You, want, you don't want them to waste a lot of energy running around in the bag. Uh, you want to make sure that you release them in a good location, uh, close to where you have host plants. You want to make sure you have something for them to eat on these plants. And, um, and that will increase your chances dramatically of having a successful release that they will stay around uh, as, long as, they, as long as there's something for them to eat. So thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. I love doing these with Nathan because I kind of think bugs are cool. So they I hope cool. you enjoyed it and found that there's another alternative for it, using integrated pest management in your garden. Join us every Thursday at 1030 a.m. Hope to see you next week. See you next time.